What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have a lot to talk about once again. We have another area of interest that has been tagged in the eastern Atlantic Ocean near the Cabo Verde Islands. We have Invest 90L that is about to develop into a tropical cyclone. It's getting pretty close to doing that. At this, at this current point, we also have a big threat in the Caribbean Sea we are paying attention to, and we are also watching the uh, uh, Joyce and Isaac as they move through the Atlantic. So let's go ahead and dive right into this right here. Just want to check something very, uh, very quickly uh, before I get started right here. But anyway, here's what we go, uh, got. We have three areas of interest. Once again, we have a mod we have a medium risk, a high risk, and a low risk of development in all three cases. We're going to go ahead and start with those three areas of interest going from west to east as this poses the greatest threat to people in the area. So here's what we have going on. A broad area of low pressure over the Western Caribbean Sea is producing disorganized showers and thunderstorms. Environmental conditions appear to be conducive for gradual development. And a tropical depression could form during the middle part of this week while the system meanders towards the west-northwest. This system is then expected to move to the northwest into the Gulf of Mexico during the latter portion of this week. And interest in the northwestern Caribbean Sea and along the U.S. Gulf Coast should monitor its progress. Formation chance in the next seven days is at 50%, zero in the next 48 hours, although they do have the orange X over here now that I've been telling you guys about, so we got to keep a very close eye out for it. Next thing we're going to pay paying attention to is Invest 90L, as this now looks like it could develop pretty quickly uh, right now. So here's the situation. Recent satellite imagery indicates that the circulation associated with an area of low pressure located several hundred miles west-southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands is becoming better defined. Environmental conditions are favorable for continued development of this system, and a tropical depression is likely to form er earlier this week, possibly as soon as tonight, ladies and gentlemen. This low will continue to move westward and then west-northwestward across the eastern and central tropical Atlantic. Additional information can be uh, uh, can be found at the high seas forecast, including gale warnings and by the National Weather Service. 80% probability in the next 48 hours, 90% uh, in the next seven days. So we're going to have to keep very close tabs on this. Here's the situation that we have going on now. A low-latitude tropical wave located near the coast of Western Africa is currently producing limits limited shower and thunderstorm activity. Upper level winds are forecast to be more conducive for gradual development of the system during the next several days. While it moves southwest, uh, slowly westward and west-northwestward over the eastern Atlantic Ocean, 30% chance in the next seven days, 0% in the next 48 hours. We're going to have to pay attention to that. And we also have Isaac and Joyce right here. Isaac is it could be coming an extra tropical cyclone. Ultimately, not too worried about this system out here. Joyce has been uh, is slowly starting to weaken. I've been looking at satellite imagery, at least the satellite imagery I can get from this. Joyce is really like the center of it is exposed. The convection is to the north of it over here. This is the best satellite imagery, unfortunately, I can give you guys today. Although I will say it goes from directly from the ghost. A web uh, site, so at least there's that, but there's Joyce over there, still a 45 mile per hour tropical storm, but it is expected to gradually weaken in, in the next, I'd say 48 hours or so, hell, even the next 24 hours, we're looking at a situation where the system weakens to tropical depression, and then just an open wave, and dissipates from then on out, so that's some stuff we're going to have to pay attention to. Uh, to that. So ultimately, we got some th uh, things cooking in the Atlantic. The Atlantic is continuing to get very active. The MJO is still relatively in the Atlantic Ocean, bringing all this stuff to light. And a lot of these systems are starting to wake up once again. We have potentially three named, new named storms going on, Kirk, Leslie, and the M name storm, I forgot which one that is. Be sure to let me know in the comments down below. It's been a very wild season. But here's the situation that we got right now. Satellite imagery, if we go ahead and take a look at that, pretty good overall. We have this area of interest out here, Invest 90L. Let's go ahead and refresh the page on D on the D uh, Dapio website. So glad we can still use this 
out here for right now. But what we got going on here is the satellite imagery. We're seeing much more con conducive convection firing off. We're seeing much more of this uh, of this convection starting to sustain, and that's ultimately good news for the system to develop. And this might develop in the next nine hours or so. I'm gonna check. Also, Invest 90 L as well, just to take a quick look at that. Um, yeah, w look right now, maximum stained winds are at 30 knots. Uh, pressure is 1,006 millibars. Radius of maximum winds is 60 nautical miles. And on satellite imagery, it's looking more and more impressive. Outflow looks really impressive with this as well, giving this more of an opportunity for the system to breathe. Seizure warning by th those who are f uh, prone to flashing lights. I will apologize for that ahead of time. So just letting you guys know. And just kind of looking at satellite imagery, how the system has evolved, especially in the last hour. We're seeing more and more convection firing off across the core of the, cir of the circulation right here, including some minus 80 cloud tops starting to pop up over here in those last couple of frames right here. So that's what we got paying attention in the next five minutes or so. That's what we have going uh, going on, and just ultimately a lot more convection just firing off in general on all cylinders. So we're going to have to continue to keep very close tabs on that and keep you updated on there because this does have a very big possibility of becoming a major hurricane. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, right there. We're going to start with the track models and then the intensity runs. Track models are pretty straightforward, mainly staying the system out to sea, moving to the west generally for the next 48 hours, and then starting to make a turn to the west-northwest north, west, or northwest after that, and we'll continue for the next few days, and then mainly stay out to sea from that. For the shipping concerns are the main uh, issue I, I'm looking at right now uh, with the system, so we're obviously we're going to have to pay attention to that. Intensity runs are also continuing to pop up and fire off all over the place right here. Let me go ahead and move my screen over here just to show you guys. Here's the situation. Majority of the runs want this to get up to major hurricane strength. The ship's r uh, model runs also want this to get up to potentially category 4 strength as well, so we're going to have to pay attention to this. And this is a pretty uh, pretty gradual not gradual very linear uh, escalation right here of the system just continuing to organize and develop and then boom gets up to major hurricane strength potentially up to category four and this has the best chance of being a major tropical cyclone out in the Atlantic, the best chance since Hurricane Sam of 2021. So we're going to have to watch that, keep very close tabs on that. We might be streaming and kind of talking about this quite a bit more while we're waiting for the system in the Caribbean to organize and develop because this does pose a threat once again to a lot of people. So let's go ahead and move my screen over here and then go back out to satellite imagery and, and, and look at the Caribbean just a little bit based on the GOES website. We're going to go ahead and look at the Caribbean all cha uh, all channels right here from the uh, uh, from the satellite. Here's what we got going on uh, right here. Uh, we got pretty much uh, that yellow X over there, that orange X over there, and you're starting to see that convection starting to ramp up a bit a bit more. You're starting to see an area of maybe low pressure that might start to organize and develop off the coast of Nicaragua. That's we're gonna the main thing we're gonna pay attention to. I do want to check some dry air stuff. I want to start with the upper level dry air analysis for the region right here overall what we're seeing at this current point yes we are seeing some more uh, we are seeing not as much dry air in the upper levels right there very moist across a lot of the caribbean sea and the upper levels it's around i'd say three to five hundred millibars mid levels between five and seven hundred millibars right here ultimately we're paying attention to this still very moist in the western caribbean sea there is some dry air over here off the coast of the bahamas but that is getting more and more mixed out right there. And there is a little bit of dry air in the Eastern Caribbean, but I am not concerned about that potentially impacting much uh, development, mainly because uh, we're starting to see more of that stuff getting mixed out the longer we continue to pay attention to that. And then for the Gulf of Mexico, I, and then for the lower, uh, the lower water vapor areas right there, yeah, there's a bit more dry air across the region but look at the western caribbean still very moist in a lot of areas right there and that's stuff we're going to have to pay attention to and this moisture is continuing to feed into the western caribbean and into the southern gulf of mexico and we can go ahead and show you that right here gulf of mexico and uh, gulf of mexico go to the animation loops and then go 
to the uh, go to the lower uh, water vapor, you're starting to see more and more of this moist air getting fed into the Gulf of Mexico, especially the southern half of the Gulf, as you're seeing right here. So then that's going to give it more of an environment for conducive development. And that's a main concern we're paying attention to because not only is the moist air pretty good with this system, you're also paying attention to very warm waters, a lot of ocean heat content still standing right there. And we're going to, and pretty much not very much wind shear that's going to be impacting this system. And we will show you all that data right now. Let's go ahead and start with the sea surface temperatures uh, starting off right here. Global sea surface temperatures still well over 30 degrees Celsius in the Caribbean Sea and in parts of the Gulf of Mexico, especially the loop current. And I was kind of looking at this. The upwelling didn't really do that much in the Caribbean Sea. It went from 31 Celsius to 30 Celsius, literally dropped like 80 from 88 degrees Fahrenheit to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. You're not going to make that much of a difference. You're still very conducive for rapid strengthening. You're still very conducive for a lot of very quick organized development going on in there. And even in the loop current as well, you didn't see that much of an OHC drop because of how fast this system was moving. This system literally pulled a barrel as it approached Florida and didn't touch much of the of the OHC over there. So that's stuff we're going to have to pay attention to going forward. Let's go ahead and show you the OHC. OHC continues to be a very big problem for a lot of these areas right there where the system is expected to go. And then I will get to the Invest 90L. OHC continues to be very, very high in the Caribbean Sea and very high in the loop current right there. So if this system continues to move through and push through the way it has been, then you got a situation where, okay, this system could rapidly intensify again. I'm not saying it is. You need the right conditions to do that. But considering that we have more moisture into the Western Gulf and more moisture, uh, not the Western Gulf, but the Western Caribbean, but that Western Gulf as well. And you have a, still a ton of ocean heat content going on with some areas still cracking 200 off the coast of Cuba right there. That's a pretty big problem, I will tell you. And that's a pretty scary situation to take a look at because you have all this OHC, you have all this warm water over here that encompasses all the way through the loop current right there. And then you have, th and then you just basically have the wind shear. Let's, let me go ahead and show you the wind shear map. Wind shear is calming down in the Gulf of Mexico and Northwestern Caribbean Sea. There is a little bit of wind wind shear off the coast of Nicaragua, but that is expected to recede just a little bit and then allow for this tropical development to kick off. We're already only seeing 25 knots of wind shear in that region, which may seem like a lot, but that could definitely uh, at least give this tropical system, uh, development some more breathing room over there. So we're going to have to pay attention to it, but this is expected to recede in the near future. So in terms of Invest 90L, if we go ahead and show you the water temperatures, where it's at right now, it's in an area of about 28 degrees Celsius. It's going to hover around there, maybe crack up to 29 uh, briefly as it stays out to sea right there. Ocean heat content, where the system currently is at right now, based on the National Hurricane Center, off the coast of the of the Cabo Verde Islands, where it's at right now, it's in an area of about 50-ish OHC, but it is expected to move into an area of around 75, cracking 100 OHC in some of these areas. That's pretty good for rapid strengthening as the system moves out and continues to stay out to sea. So we're going to have to pay very close attention to that and taking a look at the wind shear. There is some wind shear surrounding it, especially on the southern side, but that wind shear is expected to recede once again, according to the National Hurricane Center. Let's go ahead and show you the shear and the moisture forecast right here. Let's start with the wind shear right here from the 2850 millibar wind shear. Wind shear, as you can see in the Caribbean Sea, does increase a little bit, but then really recedes as this upper level low moves through. And then tropical development starts initializing in the next few days or so. In terms of what we're looking at in the eastern Atlantic over here, yes, you are seeing that wind shear, but it is going to recede and subside a little bit on the southern side. And that wind shear you're noticing right there... It mainly is kind of what the storm influence is doing. It's not really wind shear more so than just the storm influencing the outflow and the winds and everything like that. Paying attention uh, to that right there. Europe. Uh, so we're going to have to pay attention to it. Matter of fact, this system will probably not be, uh, get, be into heavy wind shear until it gets into this ridge right here off the, uh, in the Atlantic Ocean. So we're going to have to pay very close attention to that down the road. Let's go ahead and show you the moisture component to all of this because you need moisture for tropical development. 
plenty of moisture in the Caribbean Sea, decent moisture in the main development region that we're paying attention to. There is going to be a little bit of a dry air intrusion in the next few days or so, but that's going to get quickly mixed out, and the Gulf of Mexico continues to be very, very moist for tropical development, and we're going to have to keep very close tabs on that as well. And in terms of the main development region, you have a pretty good moisture pocket. Dry air is not going to be a problem, especially as that wind shear continues to go down, down, down around the system. So that's what we're paying attention to to the shear and the moisture. Let's go ahead and pull up some ensemble runs to kind of take a look at how this system's going to play out. Let's go ahead and start right here. This is a 12Z from the GFS. I want to start with the 0Z and then go out to 240 hours just to kind of give you a, a glimpse of what we were looking at before. Let's start with the Western Caribbean uh, side of things and then move over to the main development region. Western Caribbean, you generally had uh, the system starting to push towards Florida. It interacts with the frontal boundary and the Gulf of Mexico and then makes a hard drive to the right and impacts Florida over here on the 0Z ensembles. Let's go ahead and pull up the 12Z run to see how this has changed. Sim it's a lot more scattered, I will tell you that, but there's a lot more scenarios of tropical development as well, and it's kind of scattered, although the majority of the consensus is from the Florida Panhandle to the Big Bend region from the 12Z, so ultimately you are seeing this inconsistency with track. You are seeing this instant consistency with strengthening, but the signal is still there. It's still expected to develop, and the operational runs are reciprocating that relatively well. Let's go ahead and show you uh, what we're looking at at the Atlantic uh, as well. Let me go ahead and pull this up. Once again, let's go ahead and uh, zoom into this region for the GFS ensembles. We'll start with the 0Z and then move on to the 12Z. 0Z ensembles have this system really ramping up. It takes a little bit of time to organize and develop, but then it really ramps up and explodes in intensity with potentially major hurricane implications out here in the Atlantic once again. And if we go ahead and show you the 12Z, a lot more consistent, a lot more uh, a lot more concentrated, and a lot stronger as well. A lot more stronger scenarios as well. So that's the main thing we're paying attention to. Just out of curiosity, we're going to pull up the European 0Z to kind of reciprocate. Yeah, similar situation what's going on pretty strong with the zero z european ensembles with that right here and moving into the western uh, caribbean sea with those runs let's go ahead and zoom in on this uh right now still pretty inconsistent with strength pretty inconsistent with how it tracks but it still develops it and we're gonna have to pay close attention to that let's go ahead and show you some operational runs uh right now here's the uh, we already kind of showed you the european a little bit with the shear and the moisture components we'll start with the european ai run just to kind of uh, uh, kind of make things well excuse me just to kind of spice things up a little bit i lost my wording right there but here's the european ai model wanting this wanting both systems to organize and develop although the european ai model wants one obviously a lot stronger than the other one the European AI model wants this system out here in the Atlantic Ocean to get up to Category 3 or Category 4 strength, while the system out here in Florida is expected to remain a tropical storm on the APHIS model right here. However, whatever rain that these areas do get is still going to be very detrimental. I want to make that absolutely clear because right now we're still seeing scenarios of North Carolina, the Appalachian regions of South Carolina as well. Ultimately, seeing all these flash flood emergencies and ultimately seeing just all these impacts like impacts are going to be very important for this system as well these areas do not need more rain right here and we're going to have to pay attention to that let's go ahead and show you the gfs as well gfs has the system organizing and developing in the caribbean sea gets down to tropical storm maybe weak hurricane strength although it does pull like an evasive maneuver or something like that it's been doing that all uh, this entire time and then making landfall near new orleans louisiana i'm not 100 percent buying that if i'm going to be honest with you if it's more the most likely scenario is alabama east due to an incoming trough as for the system out here in the Atlantic Ocean, you're looking at two possible areas of development, one being a major hurricane, another one being a Category 1 hurricane near the Cabo Verde Islands right there. So ultimately, we're going to see our ace makers out there this season. We're going to want to pay attention to that. Let's go ahead and also show you the Canadian run as well. Here's the 12Z Canadian. Systems will all organize and develop. Canadian has the system developing, although it remains around tropical storm strength and it takes a bunch of evasive actions, which I'm going to be honest, I don't buy the uh, the track of it or, or per se, but I do think it's going to develop, and the NHC does as well. 
And then you have these two areas of development right there. The Canadian run wants this system out here in the Atlantic to be a lot weaker, while the main development region one relatively stays in place and just moves due west. And the reason for that is you have an upcoming ridge right here, huge high pressure system, and the Canadian wants this system to, as a 972 millibar system to impact the Caribbean Sea and especially the Lesser Antilles right there. And that's all stuff we're going to have to watch and pay attention to. And we will continue to monitor this here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and close the video out right here. I really hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us get more people engaged with weather. Shout out to Daniel as an official sponsor of the Pat's Path Predictor Patreon. If you want to support the channel more directly, be sure to join our Patreon. Link is in the description down below. It's the first link. If you want to come hang out with us at Storms United and Talk Tropics, be sure to join our Discord server. The link to that is right over there. And with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.